there was nothing that was blatantly uh, that I would consider out of the ordinary. Um, you know, the things he would talk about, he would have sort of like a, I guess, a sexual perversion, but always talk about, you know, like sexual things. Um, I was, you know, he was a teenager and I was a young kid, so I wasn't exposed to those things at the time. But, then why you know, I, as I grew up, I sort of you know, saw that a lot of teenagers are sort of obsessed with sexual comedy, you know, sexual talk, sexual comedy. But, uh, you know, in the events uh, that happened, uh, you know, again, I'm trapped to think back to, you know, over a decade before, so I can't, you know, I guess list any specific examples. Um, just, you know, you have uh, a lot of friendships growing up, and, you know, some, some of your friends, you, you, I guess, pass by as mom or something, you know, they're kind of odd, but, uh, but nothing that, again, family says that he wasn't religious, that his family wasn't overly religious, what did you, what did you know? Um, so yeah, uh, you know, the only times I would see him were when I were at the mosque, so when I, when I would go to the mosque and he would go to the mosque were the only times that I would ever, you know, ever see him, and, you know, especially during the month of Ramadan, we would frequently go to the mosque, you know, much, my father would go every day, we would, uh, you know, ask kids going to school, at least go on the weekends, and Omar would always be there. Um, you know, it, it, with regards to his religious devotion, I don't think it was, um, it was necessarily abnormally, you know, uh, uh, absolutely stringent to the religion. Um, I myself wouldn't consider myself a, a strict adherent to the Islamic religion, more of like a casual observer. So he wasn't, he wasn't radical in his thinking at the time, he didn't? No, absolutely not. And one of the things I, I've always wanted to stress is that, you know, uh, the teachings from our imam at our mosque growing up had never even suggested or remotely hinted at any sort of acts of aggression or violence. He always taught, uh, you know, a sermon of, of peace and understanding and tolerance. Uh, so I don't know where Omar got these ideas from and I don't know what push him over the edge to cause these attacks, but it's it's completely you know unjustifiable, it's disgusting, it's deplorable. Um, but all I can do is provide insight to the, the child I knew uh, was Omar. What, what's interesting is that he seemed to say, oh, he supports al-Nusra, and then he supports the Taliban, and then he supports Hezbollah, and then he supports... And so it's this very contradictory web of groups that most of them don't like each other. And so how does that line up in your mind? So, I think what it mostly points to is somebody who is clearly mentally unstable. Um, you know, whatever events cause them to you know, push them over the edge and commit this act, uh, I don't know. But uh, instead of, you know, I guess, uh, with you say, you know, Hezbollah versus, you know, Hamas or ISIS or whatever, these groups that are attacking, you know, are at, you know, butting heads with each other, I think it more points to somebody who is you know, just mentally ill um, as opposed to somebody who is a, a religious fanatic or something. Can you just talk a little bit about the Cuba growing up? I, I know you were talking about his sexual. Yeah, um, okay, so yeah, when I, I mean, when I was about 10 or 11, this is, you know, I guess, you know, before you start hitting puberty, uh, Omar was four years older than me. Actually, his birthday is the same day as my birthday, which is kind of, kind of uh, I think it's odd. But, um, you know, he would talk about, you know, like, you know, different models or different actresses, and he would say, you know, tell things that he would want to do to them. Um, and, you know, as, as a kid, I, I guess, you know, I just listened and just took in the information. It was never anything I'd ever heard of before. But, you know, as, you know, I was a teenager and there were other teenagers around me, it, it, and I sort of normalized it as, like, yeah, you know, teenagers can seem obsessed with sex, you know, so they talk about things like that. Um, but it is just something, you know, again, when you're recalling all the things that you can remember about somebody who have done something like this, you, know, you start to try to like, piece the puzzle together and figure out exactly why. Like, I woke up here, like, I woke up here, like, I woke up here, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, looking uh, back, you're an adult now, how would you describe it? Uh, so I mean, uh, like, I guess, aggressive sexual acts, you know, like, not like, I want to make love to this woman, but, you know, using, I guess, perverse language, um, 
you know, it was more like that, but never anything like, I, I would say like violent. grotesque. No, nothing like grotesquely violent, um, nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, uh, you know, nothing like extreme, like, you know, like that was famous ever, anything like that, just, just like aggressive sexual, you know, verbalization. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. So you were a, a childhood friend of Omar Mateen's. Yes. How did, when's the last time you saw him and how did you recognize that this was the gun? Okay, so the last time I saw him, um, there's an event uh, each year called Ichnema, it's just a gathering of, of, uh, of uh, people from mosques across the state of Florida uh, to a central location, I believe, uh, the year I went. It was my junior year, I was like 15 or 16. Um, or a sophomore year actually in high school. The event was in Tampa. Um, you know, I had seen him. I hadn't seen him for several years uh, you know, prior to that. So we just caught up, like uh, you know, like his old friends would talk about our lives, and, like our future goals, I will start what we were doing. Um, you know, as a as a child, he was you know uh, rather obese, uh, heavy you know heavy set kid. But he had gotten into weightlifting, and you know, he was a frequent, uh, I guess, a gym rat would be the, the term that people use. Um, I asked him, you know, at the time because of how big he was, I'm like, are you using steroids? And he kind of smirked and said, can you tell? And uh, I was like, you know, you shouldn't do those things, you know, they're bad, but uh, you know, as, a, as a kid, you know, you say those things. Um, but that's the last time I saw him. When I heard about the attack, um, well, I can just take you through the day, and uh, my aunt and my mom texted me in the morning saying, like, I know you, you're safe, I just want to be absolutely sure you're safe and okay. And I thought they were referencing the, uh, the shooting, like, two nights before um, at the Primetime Live, uh, I forget, I think that's uh, the name of it, or Plaza Live, Plaza Live, yes. Um, oh, oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah, my the plaza lives. Uh, yeah, And I so I was like, yeah, of course, you know, I'm okay. But then I turned on the news and I saw that they had 20 confirmed deaths at this nightclub and that they were still shuttling victims to Orlando Regional uh, Medical Center. And, um, you know, that's all I heard at the time. Around noon, I was driving to go play tennis with a friend and uh, my little cousin called me and said, the cops have been up and down. Uh, he lives about 10 minutes away from uh, Omar's parents' house. Um, had been up and down the street uh, all day and that uh, Omar was, you know, announced as the shooter. And, you know, at first I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you know, are you joking? Like, this, you know, obviously isn't something to joke about, um, especially with uh, religious tensions as, as there are, especially, you know, with the new election coming up. I'm like, dude, this is not something you should joke about. You're not kidding. This is not something you would joke about. Um, so I did a quick Google search and saw that the suspect killing. I called my mom and my brother, and they had the same reaction. Are you kidding? And I said, you know, no, I wish I, wish I was. Um, Let me stop you there for a moment. Uh, I want to get you going. Everyone is trying to draw a conclusion how this could happen. Being someone that is a new have you been able to drive? No, I mean, as I said before, there was a 10-year lapse in our communications. So I don't know what had happened between, you know, when I left for college and when he, uh, I guess, eventually went down this, this horrific road, uh, this, you know, twisted, bizarre road. Um, you know, I, I've said in other interviews, yeah, he, he was kind of an odd kid, but never overly violent or overly aggressive in any way, shape, or form. Um, but then there's a 10-year lapse, so I don't know what had happened between that time I had last seen him and now. And, and based on what we're hearing from his wife, uh, from the, from the things uh, that his father is saying, you know, it seems to be a combination of factors that played into Did you see any of the, you know, the can you grab uh, rigorous the political <laughs> activism of any sort in, in his household growing up? Was there a sense of violence that he portrayed uh, as a child? Uh, no, I mean, well, like I said, you know, you start to, to try to draw conclusions. You know, we played, you know, football. I guess that's a you know aggressive sport, or we would you know wrestle, and that's I guess can be considered a violent sport, or we would play Mortal Kombat as kids, which is a violent video game. So you start to try to piece these things together, but you know I partook in those things too, and I would never do anything like this. Uh, even it would never even cross my mind to do something like this. Um, so you you start to try to like piece these you know, uh, things together. Uh, every time I was at his house, you know his father and his mother were you know kind, uh, quiet, uh, never uh, angry or aggressive. There were no like political newspapers. There were no guns or gun magazines, anything like that in the house. Um, it seemed, you know, like a normal, normal household to me. Um, what's next for you? Um, I, I really don't know what to think. Usually I, you know, I, I, I always have just anger and frustration when any, when this happens 
you know, at any time, and it's it's compounded by the fact that you know this is a, a, again a, an attack on the the Islamic community. But I don't want people to feel that way because I think people should be grieving and feeling sorry for the victims and the victims' families rather than the Muslim community. But it, you know, it, we we try to to spread a word of peace, and when things like this happen and things like this and the Paris attacks are reported on the news, uh, it makes it very hard, and you know, you you, you tend to lose faith, you know, with and get frustrated with your religion and you know, why do people act like this? This has never been the message I've been taught growing up in this religion. So.